Power Apps just dropped a brand new host object and I'm going to show you how to use it in my two favorite use cases right after this. So if you've looked around at Power Apps recently, you might have noticed something new here in the tree view. So now under our app tab, which is where we normally go to do things like add code into the OnStart, we have a drop down and we have a new object for host. Now there's nothing we can do with this. There's no properties associated with it and we can't fill out anything in here. But what this is allowing us to do is get information about the host object. Now this host information has always been there. We just haven't had an easy way to access it until now. So you might be wondering, what is this host information? Why do I care? What can I do with it and all of that? So I'm gonna show you my two favorite things that we can use this information for. So let's start by looking at what we can even get with this host object. And I'm gonna simply add in a new text label and in the text property, let's just type host. That's how we're going to get to this new information and do a dot. Now the dot syntax is how we see what properties are associated with an object. So with this, we can see we can get the browser user agent property. And this is going to return a string value to tell us what browser the user is using. So if I were to select that property now, I'm on my Mac. So we can see it's returning this big long string here of the browser that I'm using. Let's add another label and keep looking at these different properties that we have. So for this one, we'll do host again and dot. The other thing we get is OS type. Now this one's really cool. It's going to tell us what OS we're on. So from this information here, we're able to gather if someone's on a desktop or a mobile device. So right now I'm on my Mac mini, so it's returning Mac OS. It'll also return if you're on a Windows machine, if you're on an Android, an iOS, or a Linux device. So we can get all of that information of what device someone's on for this one property. Now, if we keep looking at what we have here, if we do host dot, we also have session ID. So this is going to be really useful in terms of troubleshooting. So this is kind of leading me into my first major use case for all these properties. And it's to help you debug and troubleshoot your applications. Because a lot of times when someone has an issue, there's some basic information that we need to gather about that. Like what is your session ID? What tenant are you in? And all of that. So this is allowing us to easily get that information. So lastly here, it's also going to allow us to get the tenant ID. Again, very useful when it comes to troubleshooting. So what's the real life application that we might use this for? Now let's start with that troubleshooting scenario. So in my application here, this is actually just a very simple contact list. And I have hyperlinks here to be able to email someone, text them and all of that. But what if someone's having an issue with the application? Maybe one of the hyperlinks isn't working or data isn't showing. We can build in a help mechanism right into the app. So that's what I did here with this help button. And it just takes me to one screen where all I'm asking from the user is, is to describe their issue in this text input. So if I'm having trouble here, I can put in something like the YouTube link isn't working for me and click submit. Now, oftentimes when we do these kind of help scenarios like this, it's kind of a back and forth situation. So someone submits the issue and then tech support has to get back and ask those details, which the host object is already giving us, like what's your session ID, what's your tenant and all of that. So with this new property, we just bypassed a lot of this back and forth. I asked the user one question, what's your issue? I use the out of the box properties to be able to get the user's name and email and those new host properties. So now when this reaches the help desk, they already know what browser the person is using, their session ID, their their OS and all of that. So this is one big obvious and very helpful use case for this. But let me show you another use case for this host object that's a little less obvious. Now this might be going a little bit off the script for the intention of this host object property, but I'm gonna show you it anyway because I think it's really useful. Now I actually have a really old video about this technique I'm about to show and how you can accomplish it a different way but I think that this way might be a little bit better and more straightforward. Now what I'm talking about is giving us the ability to customize the experience of opening other applications from our Power App. And this contact list is a really good example of that. So I might have different information about someone that I wanna link off to in my app. So I might wanna be able to email them, send them a message, see their LinkedIn profile, their YouTube profile, or maybe even find out where they are on a map. So when we want to access an external URL, there's a PowerFX function for that called launch. And we simply type in launch and pass it in a URL. 
Now that works fine when you're on desktop and it opens up your URLs and everything is great. But what if you're trying to optimize this experience for a mobile device? Well, oftentimes when we're optimizing this for mobile, we don't want to have the application open in our mobile phone's browser. We'd rather use the integrated app on our device. So great examples of this would be LinkedIn. Rather than opening up in Safari on my iOS device, I wanted to open my native LinkedIn application. We're actually able to do that with something called URL schemes. We've probably all interacted with a link somewhere and had it open up the native app on our device. That's all possible with these different URL schemes. And iOS and Android have different URL schemes that we use. I don't know of one central resource that will show us all of the URL schemes for the different apps. I usually just rely on doing a search and tracking down some of that information. And honestly, lately, I've been using ChatGPT and just asking it what the URL scheme is for an app that I wanna integrate. But this is a really good resource I found on Medium with this blog article that lists several different common applications and their URL schemes. So you see we have all the different schemes for YouTube, Workday, and all these different apps. So we would essentially place this URL scheme with the traditional URL if we wanna have it open up the native app. But the problem when we're trying to integrate this with our applications is oftentimes we want our Power Apps to be able to run both in desktop and on the mobile device. So we can't just put the URL scheme only because then it won't work on the desktop and we can't put the URL only because then it might not work and open up the native application on our mobile device. So how do we get around that? Well, the host objects OS property can help because we need a way to determine what OS someone's on. Are they on a desktop device or are they on a mobile device? And then we can use that data to customize the experience. So let's take a look at how to make this happen. We're gonna start with this map button. So when a user opens this, if they're on their desktop device, I wanna to go to Bing Maps. If they're on their Android, I want to use the native Google Maps capability. And if they're on their iOS device, I wanna use Apple Maps. So now we can use that new host property to do this. So on my map button, on the on select property, I'm gonna use a switch statement here. And for the switch value, I'm going to point that to my host.os type. And I'm just going to loop through the different OS types that I want to accommodate for. First, I wanna accommodate for if they're on iOS. If they're on iOS, I'm gonna use my launch function. And I'm gonna use the URL scheme for Apple Maps, which is simply maps colon, forward slash, forward slash, address equals, and I wanna put in the address for this current user. So I'm just gonna do an ampersand and this item dot address. Now I'm going to check to see if it's Android that they're on. And if so, I need a different URL scheme for Android. So I'm gonna put in that syntax there and then pass in the address. And finally, if it's anything else, regardless if they're on a Mac desktop or a Windows or Linux, I just wanna go straight to Bing Maps and pass in my address there. So now if I use this application on my desktop and I click on the map, you see it's taking me to Bing just as we expected and going to that address. Now let's take a look at what this would look like if I use this on my iOS device. And now you see here, rather than going and opening up Safari and going to that Bing URL, it's using my native Apple Maps capability. And I don't have an Android device on me, but you'll just have to trust me that this would work on an Android device and open up the native map capability there. And we can use a similar method then for the LinkedIn and the YouTube links. Now to do this, I did something slightly differently. I did this logic right in my data source. So in my app on start, this is where I'm defining and building out my contacts list. So for LinkedIn, I'm saying if the host type is iOS or Android, then I wanna use this URL scheme. So it's LinkedIn colon forward slash forward slash profile forward slash and then your name. Otherwise, just take me to the normal URL for LinkedIn. And then I did the same thing for YouTube. So if this is an iOS or Android device, use that URL scheme for YouTube, otherwise use a URL. So there's different ways that you can go about this either at your data source level, if you're kind of defining it here on your on start like I am, or on the actual button click. And there are some things that don't need a URL scheme. So if we look at this call button, for example, if we wanna call someone, the scheme that we use to do that on a desktop device or a mobile device is the same. So we would do TEL 
colon and then paste in the phone number there. And if I'm on my Mac right now, it'll open up FaceTime on the Mac. And if I'm on my iOS, it'll open up my native phone capability. And the exact same thing for email as well. We use launch and we use the mail to colon and then pass in the email. And that will open up the default mail app that you have on whatever device you're on. So now let's just run the app again on our mobile device and click on each one of these buttons and see what the experience is like. You'll notice when I click on the mail, it opens up my native mail application. Same thing here for the phone icon. It's going to ask me if I want to call this person. And if I click on LinkedIn, this takes me directly to this person's profile inside of my LinkedIn application. And if I select the YouTube option, it's going to take me right to this person's channel on YouTube. And we already looked at the map capability, but might as well open it up again. And there you go. Now this might seem like a little thing, but this really does make our applications more user-friendly and intuitive by leveraging the native applications on our device. So I hope this was a good introduction to the new host object there. And it gave you some ideas of how you can start incorporating it into your applications. If you enjoyed this video and like the content that I put out, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button so you can be notified of future videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Are you looking for more Power Apps tips? Check out some of these other videos I have.